because we have such large EDS detectors, we can map relatively large areas uh, quite quickly because we don't need to dwell uh, too long to get decent counts at each pixel location. Um, that means we can actually um, use our maps to calculate phase proportions and that they're statistically quite robust because we are covering a large area of our sample. So if you want to quantify how much of a given phase, having identified that that phase is present in your sample, we can then move on to the analyze phases portion of the software. I've already processed this just to save time, but uh, normally you would just have the find phases button and there would be no data here blank. The data would be blank because we haven't yet found the phases. So first thing to do would be to look for settings. I tend to stick with the default settings uh, and always work with that. You can change the tolerance of the of the um, function to actually try to tweak out different phases and that sort of thing if, it's, if the default isn't working for you. But essentially, we press find phases. Now, what happens is that the software works through each pixel and it looks at the chemical composition in the spectra at each pixel location and it tries to find similarities between different pixels with similar spectra, spectral contents, basically. So this is called a, a principal component analysis, um, if you want to look it up, and it uses clustering to data clustering to actually then group pixels of similar chemical compositions into a, a similar phase. So we can see, as I say, I did this earlier, uh, it can take a little bit of time to actually process the data in this way. Um, but here's my phase image, which I got from pressing find phases. Uh, if I expand that, you can see that I have a load of different chemistries that have been output. And I have unassigned pixels, which is uh, pixel locations that didn't really fit into any other groups uh, very well. Often the unassigned pixels occur at grain boundaries. So if we zoom in on the data, you can see that there are edges of the grains that are visible. And really what we're seeing here is a mixed set of spectra. So we're getting half one phase, half of the adjacent phase. So it's struggling to really classif classify into uh, a specific chemistry. What we want to do is to identify what these chemistries represent, which phase they represent, and rename them uh, appropriately. So if we click on this, we can see it's in this clinoperoxine field. Uh, it's where I extracted my clinoperoxine spectrum previously from the elemental data. So I will re rename that CPX. I click on the next one, you can see it's in my plagioclase field that I've identified a phase as plagioclase and you can see the spectrum again from this uh, phase that's been identified it looks like plagioclase so I can rename that plag. I won't go through each of these but basically you follow that through for each of your different phases identifying which phase you think it is. If you're struggling to identify the phase you can also zoom in and take a spectra reconstruct a spectra for that phase if you want a bit of a cleaner spectrum. Uh, again, this looks like CPX to me, slightly more iron rich than the, than the previous one. So um, I would also call this maybe FECPX, for example. You can see as you change the, as you rename your um, phase maps, that they're renamed in this table here and it's giving us a percentage of that phase, the percentage of the total area that that phase uh, accompanies and how many pixels are actually represented in that by that phase. So once you've renamed all of your different phases, you can simply select pressing shift all of these data uh, and copy them into Excel from, from there. One thing I should say is that the process of converting elemental data into phase data is is imperfect. You can see from the unassigned pixels, we haven't been able to classify every pixel as we'd like. Um, it may be that you have phases that are similar. You think they are the same phase, but the, the software has tried to group them separately. So you may want to combine two phases together. So let's say, for example, that this looks a bit like Plage. Uh, that doesn't look like plage. 
let's rename this one Plage. And you can see now we have two Plagioclase phases identified. We can leave it as, as it is so that we submit in Excel uh, to, to group all the Plagioclase together. Or alternatively, alternatively, we can right click on the phase and then select Merge into and ask it to merge with the Plagioclase field below. Having done that, we lose the naming of that phase, so we need to rename it in the list here. And you can see now I have Plage with um, the combined total of those two phases. So before you export your data, make sure you, you've cleaned it up as much as you'd like. Um, but you can always do this uh, addition of two phases together in Excel subsequently if you forget to do it now.